This video is designed to give you a basic understanding of the considerations that need to be made when preparing for surgery. Please keep in mind that this video is a reference guide only and your preparation and recovery may differ from that described. If you decide to go ahead with surgery, you'll need to learn what to expect from the surgery. Preparing mentally and physically for surgery is an important step towards a successful result. Understanding the process and your role in it will help you recover quicker and you will lower the chance of having problems. Recovery from a surgical procedure can take months to regain normal function. It's important to follow my recommendations carefully after you return home. If you're suffering from chest pain, shortness of breath or another potentially life-threatening issue, do not delay. Call Triple O immediately. Inform your doctor immediately if your wound is red or draining pus. Check your temperature and inform your doctor if it's more than 39 degrees. To report a problem, please contact my rooms. Bruising and minor wound blood ooze are expected after a procedure. Large or continued blood loss is rare and should be reported to your doctor. If you have a cast, it's important that this does not become wet. If this happens, the cast is no longer immobilising the affected limb and may be ineffective. In this situation, the underlying wounds may be at risk of becoming infected if the dressings become wet. Elevate your arm above the level of your heart. If your hand becomes too swollen, your cast will become tight, restricting blood circulation and often increasing your pain. If able, move your fingers up and down at regular intervals throughout the day, as this will help to increase blood flow and aids in circulation. To prevent stiffness, move your other joints at regular intervals throughout the day. Do not poke objects inside your cast, as this can cause sores to develop and may increase the risk of infection. You should be able to resume most activities, however you should avoid activities that place excessive stress on the operated area. Remove any floor rugs that could cause you to slip. Assistive devices such as long-handled shoehorns, a long-handled sponge or a grabbing tool can be used to prevent overbending. Drink adequate liquids and limit your consumption of coffee and alcohol. It's important to follow a balanced diet to maintain your health and avoid excessive weight loss or gain during your recovery. An iron and vitamin supplement may be given to help promote healing after surgery. Vitamin K may be recommended after surgery. Your suitability to drive after your procedure is discussed in detail in another video. You can find it in the link below. I'll recommend an appropriate exercise and rehabilitation program for your recovery. These will include exercises that aim to restore motion, promote healing and strengthen your muscles. These can be done in consultation with your preferred local physiotherapist or hand therapist. Stiffness normally follows splint immobilisation of a joint for longer than two weeks. If your surgery requires protection for longer than this, stiffness can be expected after the splint's removed. Physiotherapy can help regain lost range of motion. In rare cases, surgery may be required to release scar tissue that can prevent normal motion. I'll prescribe pain medication to help reduce pain. I may also recommend medication to reduce the risk of blood clots or antibiotics to decrease the risk of infection. All medications should be taken as directed. Most metals are titanium or stainless steel and can be left under the skin without fear of complications. Sometimes metal needs to be removed if it's prominent or in a position that may cause irritation. It's unlikely that a prosthesis under your skin will cause an airport metal detector to alarm. However, cases have been reported. Discuss with your general practitioner how to obtain a medic alert bracelet to confirm your internal metal. Very rare cases of metal allergy have been reported and may necessitate the removal of your implant. It's recommended that you do not eat or drink anything on the car ride home. The combination of anaesthesia, food and car motion can quite often cause nausea or vomiting. After arriving home, wait until you're hungry before eating. Begin with a light meal and try to avoid anything greasy in the first 24 hours. Take your pain medication as directed. It's best to take the pain medication regularly as opposed to waiting until you feel the pain. If you wait until your pain is severe, you'll have more trouble controlling your pain. Pain medication can be very constipating. Stool softeners and laxatives can be effective and available from your local pharmacy. These do not require a prescription. 
Surgery involves cutting the skin to access the problem area. A permanent scar will form on the skin as a normal healing response. Scarring of a joint can contribute to restriction of movement of that joint. Most stiffness can be managed effectively with physiotherapy exercises. Severe scarring of a joint may require further surgery and removal of the scar tissue to restore movement of that joint. Scarring of a bone is a normal response to a broken bone, i.e. a fracture. This scar tissue is normally converted to new bone within six weeks of a broken bone. Keyhole surgery can cause less post-operative scarring, less joint stiffness and an earlier return to normal function. In most cases, your sexual activity can be safely resumed four to six weeks after surgery. Avoid sleeping on your operated side to prevent additional pain. You can sleep on your back, on the opposite side, or on your stomach. If you've had surgery on an extremity, keep that extremity elevated and use ice indirectly, i.e. do not apply ice directly to the skin. Place ice in a wet towel onto the skin for no longer than 20 minutes at a time. After a procedure, a minimum of two weeks off of work can be expected to recover from your anaesthetic and to protect your wounds. Longer periods may be expected if your work site has potential hazards or if your employer requires a full work clearance. To avoid disappointment, find out whether your employer is happy for you to return to work at modified duties. It's important that you discuss this with your employer prior to surgery to avoid disappointment. In the week following surgery, there's a small risk of infection. To minimise the risk of infection, a dressing is applied to the incision under sterile conditions during surgery. This dressing should remain intact and undisturbed until you're reviewed at your first follow-up appointment. The dressing I commonly use is waterproof. This can be padded dry after showering. 